Hi, I'm Barry Ostrowski. At RWJ Barnabas Health, we believe that everyone needs to be informed about the important health care issues affecting their lives. That's why we're proud to support the important educational programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by TD Bank, RWJ Barnabas Health, The Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, New Jersey Resources, Verizon, the law firm of Gibbons PC, and by New Jersey Sharing Network, dedicated to saving lives through organ and tissue donation. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, small news, big news, true Jersey, and by Commerce Magazine. This is One on One. I'm an equal American just like you are. The jobs of tomorrow are not the jobs of yesterday. Look at this. You got, you got this? Here it is, man. Look at that. Life without dance is boring. <laughs> I don't care how good you are or how good you think you are, there is always something to learn. Do you enjoy talking politics? No. People call me because they feel nobody's paying attention. Our culture, I don't think, has ever been tested the way it's being tested right now. That's a good question. High five. Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Um, this is one of the most compelling forums I've ever been a part of in my 25 plus years as a broadcaster. This is a forum on the future of urban education. Um, if you caught the last one, you'll appreciate what we're about to do. If you haven't caught it or didn't catch it, go back online. You'll see our website. You'll see the first part of this. Senator Reeves, as the chair of the Senate Education Committee, you uh, deal with parents, you deal with taxpayers, you deal with citizens from every kind of community in this state. And New Jersey is not representative of the entire nation because there are other kinds of states. But at the same time, to what degree do you sense that folks outside of cities care deeply about the education of the children in those cities? It's a difficult question to answer in the sense that school districts across the state of New Jersey for a very long time have been flat funded or, or not given uh, the, the support services. From the state. From the state that they've needed. And so when Newark and Jersey City and Patterson make headlines and they see the dollar amounts being spent and the outcomes I think creates an, a resentment that is not understood in the way that we're having this conversation Define that here. resentment. Hey, what are we doing spending all that money, sending all of our hard-earned tax dollars yeah. to Newark, to Jersey City, to Camden, to Patterson? To, and what are, we, what are we getting out of that? Now, that may not be 100% accurate, but it isn't that far off from what some folks watching right now either say publicly or think privately. You said. But, but, the, but the key is to understand that the greater success of our biggest cities, the greater success of our state. Mm -hmm. yes. The greater success we have with every child in every classroom, the greater success yes. we have them as a taxpayer. Absolutely. And so that makes us all invested. It's in their self, in mutual, it makes it's, everyone's interest. all invested. Right. But, I, I, but I need to go back Ahead, to the law. Superintendent, I'll get you as well. Go ahead. Because, because we did start this conversation between, and I'm, and I'm pro-charter, between charter and schools, and we don't want to talk about them in, in separately together. Right. We do need to revisit the fact that it started on a mission of innovation, mm -hmm. right? Charter and, schools. Right. And there are things that work phenomenally well that unfortunately or impossibly have not been transferred over 100% to traditional schools. What we need to focus on is how can we transfer those best practices right. to be sure that if there's a Saturday Academy working somewhere, that we can offer that Saturday Academy in every school across the right. state. That, even if, if it's there a is a longer school? extended day in one school facility that we're doing it, and I know we're replicating it in certain schools, but there are things that are working, and that's where the focus should be more importantly, is how can we really transfer those best practices, and some of them will require some I legal do. hurdles and uncomfortable conversations and rolling up sleeves and figuring it out with all partners to be sure that everybody gets what they need at the end of the day to accomplish that. Superintendent? So uh, I, 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 as in most things, agree with uh, the, the senator. But I, the reason that that resentment exists out there, I believe, is because it, uh, the resentment about sending funding to the, to the urban uh, core. Uh, I don't think anybody, when they really understand the issue, would say that a child 
should get less of an education, less of an opportunity, simply by virtue of the fact that he or she is born into a city with lower tax rateables, right? And that is exactly what would happen if you had a funding system based exclusively on local property taxes. It would be unjust and unfair. What happens is when someone wants to get to a better school historically, they buy a house or rent a home in another district where they believe they will get a better educational opportunity. The reason that is really, really important is that wealthy people have choices about what they are going to do. And, they, and by the way, a system uh, that has often been imbued historically with explicit racism in terms of access to mortgages, in terms mm -hmm. of where the housing projects are built, and for a variety of other things, has perpetuated that kind of separation. So the reason I get worked up about this is that you cannot say that we support any kind of system of equality or justice unless you try to neutralize those deeply embedded historical forces by getting equal funding, at least. Equal funding. To, at least at equal least. Judgment, to, to children who are born into an impoverished do, circumstance. Do you believe that, by the way, as we do this program, a new governor is taking over in the state of New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy. Do you believe he's committed to doing what you just said? Uh, he has said on several occasions that he is committed to fully funding the, f the formula, which we'll, we'll leave for another day what that means. But, uh, <laughs> fully funding the, the state school, state school, school formula, funding formula, which it is not right now. Which would lead, uh, it's I never know, been. It, it, and never are, has been. We're about $140 million light right now. And what would that mean in, in urban districts like Newark? I mean, is Newark getting enough state funding? No. We uh, would love to have about $140 million. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On the question, and I know it's somewhat of a philosophical question, but the larger question of to what degree parents outside of, mm -hmm. taxpayers outside of urban areas care deeply about urban children has something to do with the political question and the political will of those in power to send more state dollars to urban areas. And the answer is clearly not just money itself, but... Without those resources, I know this is complicated, but if there's not the will on the part of others to care about and send and dollars behind it, takes care how are we ever going to get the fuller, more funding of public urban schools? Boy, that's the billion dollar question. Well, uh, go you ahead, know, I mean, take and, a shot. And the follow, I mean, you know, the, as you know, the Abbott case began in the 1980s. The Abbott case, there were, I believe, uh, the, the original number, I don't remember, is the original number of school districts that argued before the state Supreme Court. 37. Um, 37. It actually started before Robinson versus Cahill. Exactly. Even before right. that, yeah. the Abbott case, these are districts that were getting the shaft in their mind, and the court, the Supreme Court had to decide on this question. Go ahead. And, and it's been really difficult for the legislature to meet the demands of the courts that have said, look, we have a, we have a constitutional mandate where kids, all kids in this state deserve a thorough and efficient regardless education. Regardless of zip code. Right. Every child in the state of New Jersey is guaranteed in the Constitution a thorough and efficient public education. Um, but it's really hard to convince people that that means that other people's children also deserve a thorough and efficient education. It is a very difficult political question. Why? I mean, I'm hearing it's if those kids don't expensive. get those opportunities, it's just said they're going to have a harder time getting jobs, paying taxes, right. being contributing citizens. Why is that such a hard sell? Except, except that there's one thing. The school funding formula eliminates the political conversation. Explain that. Because the school funding formula is set with variables. So the concept is that the money follows the child regardless as to what district they're in. And so if you're at risk, if you're an English language, le language learner, uh, if you're in different categories, special ed, et cetera, you, you, mm -hmm. Those buckets collect different pots of money, and that's how the, the outcome comes out. If we fully fund the formula, there is no political conversation about it. It's a scientific metric. Do you believe that, that Governor up, Murphy is prepared to do that? He's made that publicly, and I, and I can tell you that this year, the leadership and several of us at the state Part of the reason why the budget was held up was because we were committed to ensuring that we were going to increase the funding so that we could send more access and dollars to districts like Newark and to expand a universal preschool in the state. To what extent, if we saw that happen, if we actually saw that happen, which it would be historic in the state, would we see significant improvements, even though there have been some improvements in urban school districts in terms of standardized tests, which is not the only way to measure success, significant improvements. Uh, Deputy Superintendent Gregory, when do you believe we would actually see, if that were to happen, 
more dollars, resources from the state to a city like Newark, when would we see a big difference? Well, one of the things we've tried to do in the city of Newark is, is protect classrooms uh, as much as we could, right? Uh, but with that, you compromise uh, central office staff, you compromise your ability to really engage in robust professional development and leadership training. We have to go back and look at the culture of our educational climate right within Newark. Again, we have to do this ourselves. Who's we? We, Newark, uh, the, the, the corporate America, mm -hmm. uh, community-based organizations, teachers, educators, principals, um, families. You know, we have to find a way to do this ourselves because nobody's going to do it for us. One of the issues, and again, speaking as a principal and a uh, part of the school system for principal. many, uh, I'm always a principal. Once you're a principal, you're a principal. Yeah. It's the greatest job in the world. And um, we have to look at, when you talked about the culture of a traditional, um, a traditional school, public as school. opposed to maybe a, a, the culture of a public charter school, working on Saturdays, longer year, longer day. But we have to also look at our teachers and make sure that they have the skills necessary um, and the, I don't even wanna use the word commitment. They have to change their mindset. Not everyone, there are wonderful teachers in Newark. Clearly. But we do have to change the educational mindset and culture in Newark, including principals. Practices. We have to we have to get great principals. Be nice, you know. Just look at Newark right now. Principals have not signed a contract in over ten years. Why is that relevant to the conversation? Absolutely of relevant. Who would want it to absolutely. come and work? Here, Who would right? want to work? You talk exactly. About the instability of a district, and for years there were all these headlines plaguing every every outlet. Who everyone was trying to just get out and try and get a job somewhere else. Who would want to come in and apply in a district where you already know you're going to have challenges within a classroom that could be strapped for resources, that, ha that had some kind of an instability coming from central office? The, the paradigm is shifting, but that's why I think it's so important. But to something that Michelle said, and since we have Rutgers here, we have to look at our higher ed institutions and move away What's from theory. What's their role in terms of urban because education? Because they're, they're preparing the next generation of teachers in a classroom. And we have to move away from theory, book practice, and, and our students that are in college have to spend way more time in a classroom before the day that they first collect a paycheck. One of the signs of great progress and hope is that 95% of our teachers who were rated effective or highly effective chose to return to the traditional Newark public school system last year. This year, we opened school with 99% of vacancies filled. We actually keep track of the number of applicants per the number of vacancies. How are we doing? We are going up every year. It's about, th it's about three to one now, and that's significant progress. To watch more One on One with Steve Adubato, find us online and follow us on social media. Is it accurate to say that in the traditional public schools that test scores have in fact gone up in the last three to five years for students on the high school level? Graduation rates have gone up mm -hmm. on reading and math, and more significantly, our uh, progress and our absolute proficiency compared to other comparables across the country and across the state um, have gone up dramatically. Hold on, and so I what would we're saying? I would just add that I think that's a result of the partnership and the collaboration that has happened with traditional public schools and charter schools. Hey, give me an example and of the that. Growing, the growing number of students that are in charter schools. I think the collaboration that happens with um, North Star, the North Star Academy, they're, they're leading professional development for... North Star is, in fact, a terrific charter school. Go here, ahead. A high-performing charter network of schools here in the city that the they're doing common professional development for teachers administrations for traditional and Newark public school students as well All as together, Charles, together. Yes. Every, this summer the second year they've had it hundreds mm -hmm. of teachers again sharing best practices and I would say that the, the this charter sector is growing and just now ripe to start sharing you know again what do you mean sharing what share, you doing cross professional development, um, you know, opening up the doors and, and talking about what's happening in third grade math and, and how they're getting success. And so, you know, I, I think w the, the spirit of this conversation is, is, is promising and hopeful. You know, things are, are, are great and good, but we have room to, to go. 
and I, I just want, I want to make sure we don't get lost on like complaining and problems and, and we are moving forward. Exactly. There are a lot of systemic changes like a common enrollment system right. happening in Newark and you know, the, I think the time is right and, and I just don't want to lose that. And, and then Mr. Mayor, I'm going to come back to you again, sir. There are a couple of initiatives that you're involved in, the Prudential's involved in as well, that really have to do with creating more opportunities, collaborations, partnerships. It's a summer youth employment initiative. How is that tied to urban schools? Well, obviously, uh, you know, we, we've expanded summer youth employment from about 1,000 kids to about 2,800 mm. uh, kids. Uh, we're poised next summer to go over 3,000. Um, and, and, and these are kids that are coming from before. It was you had to have a certain GPA. You had to have this. Now we take everybody and we've uh, kind of, you know, streamlined the programs and made them more robust. You know, we've involved the universities, we've involved the corporate sector, you know, we have metrics. So kids are getting a greater experience in the summertime, uh, you know, a greater academic, social, economic experience. Mm -hmm. And it also puts a little money in their pocket at the same time, which also helps their family out. So I think that that is an uh, uh, incredible opportunity for us. And we do it with all of the corporate partners in the city. Partnerships. Could you just describe one unique important partnership that involves the Newark urban schools, that Newark public schools that we have not mentioned that your organization is involved in, which would be helpful. Go ahead. One of the partnerships that I would mention is our focus on opportunity youth that the opportunity district youth. and uh, community-based organizations have all focused on. So opportunity youth are young people between the ages of 16 and 24 who have either dropped out of school or are not working. And so these are literally the most disenfranchised, at-risk young people. And the phrase of opportunity youth is something that the White House has pushed out under President mm. Obama's administration to really show the potential of these young people and that mm. they're not somebody who has a dead end in terms of their careers. And what the school district and community-based organizations organizations like Youth Build Newark and Youth Build Newark has now created this Opportunity Youth Network have done is really focus on the 6,000 young people here in Newark who are not in school and not working. And how can we get them back into Say school? Say that again. 6,000 young people in Newark who are not in school and not working huge economic implications. And so what the school district has done is partnered with organizations to really bring back these students, get them their high school diploma, get them these career right. skills that they need so that they can get into a good job. Newark will, in fact, be in control of its destiny more clearly, local control. The state will be out of it in a significant way, regardless of the Constitution, saying the state is ultimately responsible. It's to, it's, to be clear, the state is responsible, but it, it wants to give that authority back to local Wants district. to and will. Wants to and will. How important is it? Who becomes the next superintendent of the North Public Schools? I think uh, it is uh, the linchpin so our real success here, um, you know, the, whoever the superintendent is, has to have a mindset of collaboration. They cannot go into a foxhole and believe that, you know, everything that uh, is going to happen in the school district is going to be created by and for and about the school district. They have to do what we've been doing. They got to have to collaborate with the universities, collaborate with the private sector, collaborate with the city. All of it. They have to understand that this this thing can't be moving for, moved forward without everybody's hand in the pot. I just want to say we don't want to start again. We What's don't want mean? to start over. Newark has be continually started over uh, with different superintendent. Boom, something different, new curriculum, new this. Anyone who's in Newark knows that. Yeah. We are on the road. We are on the road to success. You know, it's hard. It's going to take a while, but we need to continue to work towards what NORC has done successfully right now. So we need to make sure that the next superintendent understands NORC, understands the curriculum, rigorous, robust, and can bridge, make those bridges to everyone in the community. That's what we need. So, so to Michelle's point, uh, doctor, um, you have a national perspective on urban education and education overall as a researcher at Rutgers. The state says, you know what? Or excuse me, uh, the, the Newark community says, we're going to do a national search. We're going to do a national search, and we're going to find the best educational administrator anywhere in the world and bring that person, he or she, to Newark. You say? 
Yeah, I hope not. We see uh, how that works. <laughs> I think we've now, seen we've how that, that works. Yeah, yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've, we've done that. Cities, <laughs> cities across the country have done that. They bring in somebody with a lot of splash, with an yeah. unrelated background, who's going to shake things up. Superman, and, Superwoman. Right, and there it doesn't work. I, I just want to echo what, what you all have said. I mean, this is it's an enormously challenging position, and it involves building um, and maintaining relationships yeah. and trust and a positive culture that focuses on the great potential mm. that kids have, that communities have, that families have, and not from a deficit model and not, and not looking for that silver bullet or that panacea. But he or she better know this city. I share the view that you know, out of the starting gate, it should be a person of Newark, from Newark, and I absolutely endorse Michelle. Michelle's view that we have a foundation to build on. This is not an opportunity to start afresh. That would be a terrible mistake. We don't know what a national search will yield. I do have some disagreement. Uh, there have been a lot of failures for outsiders abroad, and a lot of military guys, for example, a lot of generals uh, across the- And women. The, and men and women. Uh, 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 and uh, I would say that the, the success rate of that has not been particularly high, but there's certainly some examples where it has. So we're looking for quality. But yes, I would put a thumb on the scale for local. You would. Uh, Dr. Lyles, help us on this. Well, so as a person in Jersey City, as a result of a national search, <laughs> I understand in terms of the power of internal and knowing the, the culture and knowing the community. But I think anyone, no matter inside or outside, has, a, has to have a commitment to it being sure to know the community, to learn the community, to be of the community. When I came to Jersey City, part of, I mean, I actually, come from New York City, and so it's not that far. You know, and people said, oh, you've, but Jersey City is very different. Well, there is certainly every, every district is very different. Mm -hmm. Every right. district has its own, but there was How a- Has its own everything. Everything, Community, but there was, politics, a, there was a clear affinity um, in Jersey City around a commitment to children, around wanting to transform their, their schools. Um, and so it was really simpatico for me. And one of the things that I think is important is that it has to be that when you talked about that shared vision, it's mm -hmm. got to be a shared vision, and it can yeah. it can come it can come from outside. But knowing, you know, you don't have to start up. It, it has to be someone. It's great that everyone we're happy about it. It has to be someone who has courage, yeah. Yeah, right? Fine courage. Because yeah. it, it, to, to stand up and to stand up and be alone in certain circumstances, Absolutely. because the challenges ahead facing us are still extraordinary. Yeah. And so while we will need that network of support behind that individual, it has to be someone who has demonstrated the ability to to to. Move move academically, the professionalism in exactly. their resume has to speak volumes. But in addition to that, it has to be someone who will have the ability to be courageous in their efforts without being divisive in the community. But Robert, what about yeah, if someone, if that is that person, I'll come back to you, so what if uh, that person catches heat? I mean, real heat from community members, from <laughs> other constituencies for trying to lead in the way he or she believes. The focus has <laughs> to remain on children. That's exactly what You have to be results-driven. This is not about giving a good speech or a good PowerPoint. We need a leader who has gotten results in this community, can prove it, has done it for decades, and focuses on students. Period. Michelle? I was going to say we have to be unapologetically committed to every mm -hmm. single student mm -hmm. in the city, regardless of their zip code, regardless of their learning style, creating a high quality education where every single student has access to a great teacher, mentor, role model, where they can be their best possible self. Mr. Mayor, as we uh, wrap up here, I'm going to ask you something. Timetable that you perceive or you know, in fact, to be the case for the city of Newark to be fully in control of its destiny? And how confident are you about that destiny? I think it's sooner than folks imagine, right? I think that the next year, uh, you know, we well, we're should- we're doing this program at the end of 17, you mean 18 when it's seen, go eight, ahead. 18, yeah, I, th I think that that is, uh, you know, the year that, that this stuff is really going to, uh, to happen, I think. Uh, one thing that we have to not be afraid to say that uh, education in these cities is expensive. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. And I, and I think that we run away from that. Uh, it's to, to get us to this place where we are now, where there's been serious dysfunction, has been expensive. More expensive than suburban districts? Yeah, it's extremely expensive. People pay with their lives here. They pay with incarceration. They pay with unemployment. They pay with all of these things. And then all of those social issues, the state is paying for it anyway. 
You're paying for it One through prison. Mm. You're paying for it through prison. You're paying for it through, for it through state, state help, help through health care, all those things. Unemployment. You're paying for it anyway. You might as well pay now right. uh, to get these problems uh, invest in them so that later on, you know, you have a community in a state that's productive. Real quick, optimistic? I'm Urban very, education very in New York and America, go ahead. Extremely optimistic because? about, uh, one, because our kids are beating their eyes and doing better than other kids in the same demographic, not just in the state of New Jersey, but across the country. You know, even if you control for, for charter schools, right? So even if you control for charter schools, MPS students are outperforming many schools. students around the country. Chris, sir? I believe that we do not have a fully developed, successful birth to age three or age four system here. And if we don't get that right, uh, we are not going to ever get the K to 12 right. Final comments. We've got a great support group right here in this room. We've got a great mayor. We've got a fighting senator. We've got a superintendent that, have moved, that has helped us move. So we're going to move from pockets of excellence to excellence for everyone. On that note, uh, I want to thank all of you who have stayed with this series on the future of urban education. It doesn't matter where you live. It could be an urban area. It could be a suburban area. And in fact, a rural area, anywhere in the region, in the state. Um, as was said by many folks here, the children of Newark, the children of urban communities, what happens to them, what happens for them, what we do for them, isn't just for them and their families. It is for all of us. So on behalf of everyone on public television, Fios, and all the platforms we are seeing, we thank you for being with us. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by TD Bank, RWJ Barnabas Health, The Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, New Jersey Resources, Verizon, The Law Firm of Gibbons PC and by New Jersey Sharing Network. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. You may not have heard of Taver. Raj and Sandhya have. It's the minimally invasive alternative to open heart valve replacement. RWJ Barnabas Health is New Jersey's leading Taver provider, and we continue to perfect it. Patients are often back to their lives in just a few days. Innovative valve replacement surgery. Because you can't be replaced. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.